Good morning. Welcome jewelry makers. This is Tracy at TRCast. And um, I see Tracy Alden is here. Hello, Tracy. Thanks for popping in. Um, I have a jewelry demo for you today. If you joined us last week, you saw that we launched our um, our Wild West collection. And I should have a flyer right here handy to show you what I'm even talking about. Wild West collection. Um, we launched this last week. Um, it's very exciting. Uh, we've been working on it for a little while. You know, product product launches take some time here. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of steps that come into launching a group of new parts. So just launched this last week. We're very excited. There are um, lots, you know, part of the process of launching um, a new collection of parts is the jewelry we make to photograph and use for marketing and to use for inspiration for um, the jewelry makers. Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Julie. Hi, Sharon. Hi, uh, Janine. Nice to see you guys. Um, jewelry. So we make the jewelry, we photograph it, um, we use it for our marketing imagery, we'll, we'll use it for the flyer, and then um, we use it for, of course, inspirations, which is a huge part of our market, marketing. So, I mean, we want you guys to be inspired to make jewelry, right? So um, that's huge. So um, we got a bunch of fresh stuff, which excites me. It gives me, it gives me content for, um, for, creating the Facebook Lives and um, for putting onto our website and um, creating downloadable uh, project sheets for you guys. So hi, Landa. I'm so always so happy to see um, the regular names that pop in to watch the jewelry demos. So what I'm gonna demo, oh, I should say, um, I still don't have um, jewelry. I mean, I, Julie, she's our sales rep, she was in Tucson last week, and she was participating in the Mojo Wholesale Beach Show. Um, so she had, you know, we set her up with everything she needed to make a nice booth space, and um, she took all my jewelry. So I didn't have, I have only one of these here to show you guys. She's got the original pair. This was, this is one that I was using when I wrote the directions for the, um, for the project for the website and i wrote them recently so it should all be fresh in my head right so this is what we're going to um demonstrate today and it's um one of the things i did last week i'm gonna go ahead and switch my camera one of the things i did last week was um write a bunch of directions and load things onto the website well last week i should say over the last pretty much through the month of January, I was working on those projects. Um, and then last week I threw everything into a Facebook photo album, you know, to, to kind of start spreading it around, put it on a Pinterest board, of course, um, put it into the photo album. And I hadn't decided what was going to be my first, um, my first project yet, um, but this one got the most likes. Um, Julie, I know you got to see Julie at Mojo. She um, she sent me a picture and um, it sounded like it was a really great show. And she, I think she's really, really exhausted because that's intense. And she was there by herself. Usually there's a team of us when we go down to do a show. Um, but a little different this year, you know, dipping our toes back into the bead show thing after so much COVID quarantine and no bead shows at all. So I think she's exhausted. But I know she had a good time, Julie, and it was nice to get that picture. Um, Tracy, yes, um, the Wild West Collection launched last week, Monday? Last Monday, a week ago yesterday. So um, it is available on our website for purchase. Hi, Tina. Hi, Marika. Um, so this is the design that got the most likes on that Facebook album. So that's the one I'm going to demo. I'm just going to start with that. Um, and it's a fun one. I love it because it's a leather tassel, but because it's just a few um, strands, it's kind of wispy and um, a little bit of chain embellishment and wire wrapping kind of gives it, gives it a really fun, little bit edgy kind of look. I love it. And it was actually Julie's idea. Um, she's like, couldn't we do some kind of a leather 
um, suede lace tassel using these new, uh, they use the new concho crimp ends are part of the new launch. And we have a few other crimp ends. If any of you have worked with these, they are great for finishing um, bracelets. They are great for finishing seed bead work. There's a, there's a roomy opening that will fit um, kind of thick materials. And the bigger the crimp end gets, kind of the bigger the whole thing gets. So when you do use these, you want to make sure that you have enough material in here to so that it will hold well, because then you're either going to put use some adhesive in here or you're going to pinch these down and you can do that. I'll be demoing it later, of course, but you'll use parallel pliers are my favorite nylon jaw pliers work. Um, you'll be you'll be pinching this down to hold your material. Depending on the material, you'll want to be using glue um, to, to reinforce, especially if it's like, for example, maybe I made a seed bead bracelet that I wanted to finish with the crimp end. Um, and I wouldn't want to pinch this down hard because there's seed beads in there, they're glass, they're going to break. So rather than using the crimp action to hold that bracelet in there, I would rely on glue. I would just pinch this enough to fit the seed beads well, and then I would um, um, rely on glue to hold it. And you also don't want to pinch this down so hard that it kind of damages the part. It's, uh, you know, they're very sturdy, but you can, if you were to like just squish this really hard, you might crack the plating, I don't know. So yeah, they're wonderful for holding, um, materials that are kind of substantial like this one's perfect so this is what we're doing i'm babbling on and on about the crimp ends i really do love them um so this is this new one <clears throat> is designed kind of with a traditional western or southwestern concho design that was a strong theme in this group of parts um and so that's where the inspiration for this particular one came from all right so well, how do we start here I did say that I just wrote these recently, but and that, that should be fresh in my head, but you know, um, the first thing I want to do is choose some chain. <clears throat> and the initial, the original pair has our, we have like a little embossed chain. I think the links are about three by two millimeter, quite small and delicate. And so I pulled out, I don't know about you guys, but I have a big old bag of chain scraps. And so I just pulled out some of our finer chain. I'm working with silver for this um, for this one because I just thought it would be fun to do a different colorway. I've got some of our finer chains. I'm also using. Oh, I really want to talk about the. Um, I want to talk about the lace the laces that are um, going to be suitable for this for this design. <clears throat> so chain. Let's let's choose the chain while I got it all out. I think I'm going to use this. Um, uh, you know, I think I'm going to stick with the embossed chain. I like that it has a little bit of texture and kind of kind of goes with the Western theme. The crimp end has that little bit of detail around the edge, and I like how the embossed texture of this chain kind of <clears throat> follows along with that. So I'm going to cut. I think the instructions I wrote call for a total of six inches of chain for two earrings, so three inches per earring. That's totally up to you. You can make this tassel as long as you want, and you can make this um, little piece of chain as long as you want too. We do want to remember that we're going to add a little dangle to the bottom, but we can always trim trim this as uh, as necessary when we get kind of at the end of the process. Hello, Pamij. Hi, Karen. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Miranda. Hi, Heidi. Um, so suede laces. Um, if you guys have worked with suede laces, there's, there's a, a variety. And I wanted to kind of talk about some of them. Um, the original is made with what's called a new buck. It is a suede lace. Um, the suede we're probably almost familiar with, with is kind of thick and a little bit rough on both sides. It might be very soft. It might be very um, uh, slightly stiff. Um, the new buck that I use is from Leather Cord USA. That's just where we get most of our leather cord. 
Um, and it is a suede lace that's cut from the top of the hide so that the surface, one side of it is very kind of smooth and velvety. The underside has that kind of traditional suede rough surface because suede is made from um, the underside of a leather surface. So on the surface of a piece of leather, it's smooth, right? Um, but the suede lace is cut from like the under layers. So that explains why it's often very um, kind of rough on both sides. But this particular lace, this new buck has a nice smooth surface. So that's what I used for this original pair. And this is about all I have left. So it's not nearly enough for the process. So I'm gonna set that one aside, but I wanted to talk about it. It's a really lovely suede lace option. Another lace that you might, may or may not be familiar with is um, what's called a deer skin or deer tan lace. Um, deer skin is actually deer skin, deer leather. Um, deer tan, I think, is just a process of probably calf leather or, um, you know, traditional leather. And it, again, is very, it's typically thinner. It's typically quite soft and flexible. And it would also make a good, um, a good tassel. Um, but I think I really want a little bit more stiffness. So the deer tan and deer suede can be very, very soft and flexible. I'm going to stick with, I think, a traditional kind of suede lace. Um, and when I say traditional suede lace, I mean um, the slightly stiffer. This is a three millimeter wide. I want the stuff that's slightly stiffer and is kind of furry on both sides and a little bit thicker. So I've got some black and I've got some brown here. I think I'm going to use the brown because I'm combining that with the silver and the turquoise. And I think that will that will show up nice. So yeah, there's a lot of options when you're going with suede lace. Um, the whole point for this particular design is I want it to be a little bit stiff because I want it to have that kind of wispy, wispy thing going on. So um, for one earring, I need, I think my total that I estimated for these earrings is 60 inches. So it's quite a bit. I want just, you know, half of that for one earring. Let's move some stuff out of the way so that we don't have a bunch of clutter under my hands. That makes it hard to see what I'm doing, I think, sometimes. So I want 30 inches of that um, lace for one earring. So 24 plus six, there's 30 right here. Um, that's the first thing we're going to work with. Of course, I, as we already talked about, we need chain, we need the crimp ends, we need ear wires. We're going to use a couple of little jump rings. We have some um, head pins and I have two gauges here. I have our 24 gauge, which is quite fine. And it's a, it's a sterling silver head pin. Um, and it's very nice for wire wrapping. Our other head pins are a 21 gauge and they're quite sturdy. So they're wonderful for simple loops. They're less friendly when you're doing wrap loops. It's, it can be done, but they're, it's a bigger and chunkier wire. So how I'm going to decide which one to use is going to be determined by my gemstone bead. Um, the original pair has a nice little turquoise nugget bead. Um, and if you've worked with gemstones before, you you probably know that, um, sorry guys, I just have to arrange it nicely. I can't just flop it down there and let it look all tangled and unattractive. Um, gemstones can have quite small holes. So if I decide to do the gemstone, I'm gonna use the 24 gauge wire because my heavier one may or may not fit through the hole. Kind of depends on what you're working with. Oh, it does, but, um, but I also am, I like the idea of doing the wrapped loop. So I think I'm gonna stick with the 24 gauge. Um, I also just kind of went poking through my drawers and looked for some other types of beads in that kind of palette that I wanted. So I have these really yummy English cut check glass, um, check glass beads that would be very fun. They're a little bit bigger, but I love the kind of marbled look of those and the shape, those are fun. I pulled out a few other little gemstone beads and a couple other check glass beads. 
So this is where you could just go poking around in your stash and choose whatever you want. Um, you know, any of these would work for the design. I think, I think I'll try these little, these little uh, check glass rounds. I think they'll work nice. So because they're check glass, you don't, I mean, your wire gauge, they typically have really reliable roomy holes. So the, the larger wire gauge of these head pins would work just fine for that. And then we also need some 24 gauge craft wire. So uh, how much of that do I need? Just eight inches will do it. And I'm just eyeballing that because I don't think I need to be quite so quite so careful with that measurement. So I've got um, a 30 inch piece of, um, what did we call this, suede lace. And what I'm going for is just three wraps. So on the instructions, I think I wrote to, you could have it prepare a, like the piece of cardstock that's about five inches tall so that you can have something to wrap around. Um, that is not necessary. You can just eyeball it, but um, you're going to be wrapping around three times and you want to kind of keep it, you want to keep it, the loops fairly even. You are going to trim as you wish when you get to the end of the process. But um, yeah, a card may be helpful for you or it may not be. I just wrapped it around my hands. I'm straightening it up here at the top. Uh, kind of aligning everything and flattening everything. And here's where I'm going to tuck that into my um, <clears throat> crimp end. And I should have used a pair of pliers. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that. That will kind of come undone a little bit, but that's okay. We'll get it back. Um, when you're working with the crimp ends and you need it to be wider, what you do is you take a pair of Chano's pliers <clears throat> and just tuck it in there and open the plier jaws and that will kind of spread spread the piece open a little bit and that's what you would want to do if you need more room inside it for whatever for whatever your materials are it's a tricky thing but it can be done so um it should be roomy enough now i got to get my little piece of cord rewrapped so i let it all come undone but that little demonstration for how to do that was kind of important. I wanted you guys to see how you can open those to create more space for your materials. I have a little frog in my throat this morning. Not quite sure why. So you can see where the card would be handy. I'm estimating my lengths, you know. The card if, would be kind of quick and easy way to get that looped so the loops are all kind of fairly consistent. And then get my little loops lined up again. And then we're going to tuck it in there. And there you might have some um, thickness variation. I'm noticing just in this in this strand of leather of uh, suede lace, one of the little areas is a little bit thicker than the other. But I'm just going to tuck those all in there and kind of arrange them how I want them. Um, let me show you guys. I did do another version of this when I was working up the design. I did a version that had five loops. So that really filled up the space of the, um, of the crimp end. But what I ended up with was a much fuller tassel, which is also very cool. It would be probably be a good thing for me to take a picture of this and put it on this inspiration page as a design option, because that bigger tassel is fun. Um, but what I ended up doing for the final design was um, just using three loops. So you can see that that doesn't take up quite as much room in the crimp end. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking some pliers and moving that outside wrap a little bit towards the edge, just so it kind of spreads out a little bit. Can you see what I mean? 
just to kind of give it a little bit of a more, a better shape in there. So I've got, I've got those tucked up in there. This one's not quite tucked up in there all the way. Let's go a little, use the pliers to push it up in there. And um, as I already mentioned, I could have used some glue in there if I felt like it needed that reinforcement. In this case, I think that this cord, because it's soft and I'm going to crimp it, it's going to be, it's going to hold just fine. So I'm using my parallel pliers to um, grab the, the crimp end up at the top here and just start pinching that down until it feels like I got a good secure hold. And then, so it's all secured. We're all nice and good. Um, now I'm gonna take my piece of craft wire and I'm gonna grab that in the center with a pair of round nose pliers and just wrap that up. I wanna make, what I'm doing is making a little loop for the wire to attach to. So I'm just, uh, professional jewelry demonstrator tip, round nose pliers work a lot better for making a nice loop than your chain nose pliers, I'm just saying. Don't know if anybody noticed that, but I grabbed, I made my loop with the chain nose pliers, which doesn't create a nice round shape. I don't know why. Anyway, so I got a little, <clears throat> got a little loop, it doesn't need to be big. I want it to actually be quite small. So it's, it's fairly small and I'm gonna take my little piece of chain. And before I do, I am gonna make that into a wrap loop, but I'm gonna attach my little piece of chain first. And now I got it in there. And grab with my chain nose pliers and just do a little wrapped loop kind of thing, two or, th two or three times around. And you could also use different gauges of wire for this too. You know, you use a heavier wire, it's gonna have a chunkier, that wire wrap detail up here is gonna be a little more, a little chunkier, you know, a little more visible, It'll take a, a little, has a little more visual weight. But I wanna, I don't want, for the original, I wanted it to be less noticeable. I mean, obviously it's a, it's a nice part of the design but I wanted it to be a little bit delicate. So I used 24 gauge. So I did my wrap loop and now I'm spreading these, these um, wires apart. And I'm going to kind of position this right where I want to start wrapping. And I want to hold it right, make sure I keep it there at the center. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to take the sides and wrap each one around a couple times. And of course, you're going to be coming from the opposite sides. And I'm going to pinch these down as I wrap because I want it to stay put on the suede lace. And I'm going to wrap it a few times until I like the way it looks. And you can see how my, my little loop shifted a little bit. So that's important to kind of hold on to that loop and keep it, try to keep it centered because it can shift a little bit. So I'm wrapping, I got about five wraps there and I think that's probably good. Ending at the back. And I'm gonna cut those ends off and then use chain nose pliers to just really kind of pinch them down. Kind of pinch them down into the lace a little bit if I can. I don't want them to be scratchy and I also don't want them to snag on things, so. Okay, so pinched down. We've got our tassel. We've got our chain attached and here's where I'm gonna just come in with some scissors and cut my loops. And then I can trim. And I do like to trim so that the ends are at a little bit of an angle. I think that gives it adds to that wispy, wispy feeling. 
something that's nice about the, I love the new buck lace with that beautiful smooth surface on one side, but you do see, and this can be a plus or it may be something you don't want. You can see both sides of the lace. So you got your rough suede lace and you've got your smooth side. That actually gives it quite a bit of texture. With the, with the split suede lace, it's the same texture on both sides. So that's not as much of a, a thing. You don't have to, um, it just won't be part of the design. So here's where you get, really get to decide how long you want to leave your tassels. If you've wrapped them very um, pretty evenly, they'll be about six inches long. So you can then just start trimming them, trimming them to the length that you want. And it could be quite, you could go way short. You can leave them nice and long like this. And the last thing that we need to do is take um, whatever our little accent bead's gonna be and just make your little simple loop. And I, these little jump rings are for attaching that to the end of the chain. So I don't know if anybody needs simple loop, uh, I mean, wrapped loop demonstration, but um, there's, you know, people have different ways of doing them. We do have some, if you go to our blog on our website, um, we have a demonstration videos D in the DIY section of the blog. Um, there's little how-to videos for things like this for simple loops and simple loops and wrapped loops. So if you're in need of that kind of uh, demo, you can find it on our blog. So there we go, a nice little wrapped loop. And now I can take one of these. A little jump rings. And I can, this is also where I can decide how long I want that, how long I want that piece of chain to hang. So where will my little bead dangle? I think that this chain's a wee bit long. Right about there looks better to me. So I'm going to attach the jump ring there and then I'll trim off that extra chain. Carefully, because I don't want to cut, accidentally cut the length that the jump rings attached to. I've done that, I can't tell you how many times. But I did okay right there. So there we go. There's um, there's the whole constructed earring with that wispy kind of suede lace and our little little bit of color accent. And the last step is just to add a jump ring up at the top. Um, suede laces, you can get a lot of color options with them too. Um, one of the other things I want to try, a variation, not a huge variation, but a little bit of a variation, is I wanted to see, I want to see how uh, ultra microfiber is, what is this called? They call this faux suede lace, really. Um, it's, so, you know, some people don't actually like to use leather. They don't like to use animal projects. So this would be a nice option. This is a faux suede. I think it's made by Beadsmith. It has very, very similar texture to a split suede lace. So it will probably be perfect for this design. So I'm gonna go just for the fun of it. I thought it might be fun to put one together um, with the suede lace, with the, uh, the faux suede lace. I like the silver version. I think it came out great. Hope you guys like it. Get some of the stuff out of the way. And Again, we're going to cut a 30 inch piece of, um, of cord. And I could, if, you know, if I decided that this whole thing was just gonna be a shorter design, you know, I could adjust my length of cord accordingly. I could cut 24 and then each of my, my pieces, each of my um, 
strands on my tassel would be four inches long instead of um, six, but you know, the long is good. And I'm also combining this with the gold because I think that, that will look pretty. I've got some more 24 gauge wire right here. You can absolutely see where the card would come in handy for this. This is a slightly, um, it's a little thinner. It's not quite as thick as the, um, as the other suede lace, but you know, you're just gonna, you're going to be paying attention to that when it comes time to crimp your crimp end down. If you think that because it's thinner, it needs a little reinforcement. This was very uneven, guys. I'm afraid I have to start <clears throat> again. Um, you know, you'll want to be keeping that in mind when you crimp. And that may be where you decide a little bit of glue um, would be good because it's uh, less material to hold in the crimp. I've used this um, faux suede lace quite a lot. Um, and it's really, it's a nice product. Okay, I think I got it <clears throat> fairly well wrapped. So if I wanted to use um, some glue, this is where I would just take um, a little bit E6000 e and, uh, and a toothpick and just apply a little bit on the inside of the crimp. Um, the inside edges of where the crimp closes. Um, I don't think it's absolutely necessary in this case. Um, this lace is a little bit thinner and I got a twist, got a little bit of a twist happening, but I think it'll be okay with just pinching it. If I can get it to behave, it's not behaving um, quite as obediently as the, uh, as the, <laughs> as the suede lace was. Come on. There are times the charm, maybe. I think what I'm going to do here is I pinched it down a little bit, but I didn't pinch it super hard so that I can still go in and possibly adjust the plate, um, the position of where my lace is. And spread it out a little bit, give it a little bit of room. And then I can go in and crimp it a little bit more. And it feels like it's holding okay. I think from my experience, Carrie, I'm responding to a question, a uh, comment Carrie's making about, um, about how the suede lace, uh, the faux suede lace will hang compared to the, the traditional lace. And um, I suspect just from my experience with working with it, it's going to be a little bit springier. It's going to have a little bit more um, go where it wants to kind of feature or or action. I didn't get I didn't get myself any gold chain. Let me grab my bag of scraps. And this is what I mean by a bag of chain scraps. Everybody has this, right? It's just full of little bits of chain. Everybody must have that. Right, Tracy, a little bit of dampness and a book can maybe make your, your suede lace tassel uh, behave a little bit better. You definitely don't want to, you really usually want to avoid getting um, leather really wet. Um, but in this case, and you're just wanting to dampen it to kind of get it to behave, I think you can get away with it. So again, I've made, I've, I've cut my piece of um, uh, 24 gauge craft wire. 
and I made a little loop in the center and I'm popping a little piece of chain on there. I just grabbed a piece of somewhat fine chain. And then I'm gonna do a little wrapped loop. And to do that, I'm just, I'm bending one of the strands up and then just wrapping the other one around it a couple times. Some people are very, very neat and tidy with their wrapped loops. Me, not so much, usually a little messy. Um, I just wrapped it around twice and then I, and then I spread those ends apart again because that's where I want to, I'm going to go ahead and cut my loops here. And then I can position this wire where I want it on the lace. Try to hold it there, make sure I keep it at the center. And, uh, you know, decide where it's going to be relative to the, the crimp end. I want there, there to be a little bit of space. And I'm, as I was mentioning before, I'm kind of pinching down the wires as I wrap them. And I'm just overlapping the two, you know, I'm working with the two sides and just kind of overlapping them as I go. I'm not that concerned about their, what they're going to look like in the back. I do want the front to look good though. This um, faux suede is definitely softer. It has a lot more give as I'm wrapping this lace around, as I'm wrapping the wire around it. It's a lot softer. And I think that's pretty good. Come on now. And I do want to be careful here. I really need to make sure I'm cutting the right wire and not one of the ones that are holding the piece together. That would be bad. And then pinching down those ends a little bit. Okay, and there we are at the front. Now I need, what I thought it would be fun to do with the, um, with this is to add uh, one of our new little round um, flower, we call them the flower nugget bead. Those are a fun little accent. So I think I'm going to choose a rondelle and I'm going to stack that right on top of it. And um, that's going to be my accent for this design. Maybe. You know what? This color is going to be better with that blue. Let's do that instead. So this time I am going to use one of the um, one of the heavier gauge um, head pins and. Um, do a simple loop instead of a wrapped loop. And that will eliminate, that will mean that I do not have to use a jump ring to attach it to the um, to the chain because I can just open the loop on the simple loop. Options, there are always so many options with the jewelry design. Andrea, um, responding to a comment Andrea is making about that she bought some of these and um, they are a really lovely little um, 
accent bead. What I'm doing here is, and it might not work because this chain is a smaller gauge, a smaller, just a smaller link. So what I was trying to do was place my little dangle on the chain where I wanted it to, because but it's a little tight for that um, to fit in there. So I'm just gonna have to estimate my length and trim the chain off instead. So drop in tools. And then I can thread this uh, little dangle onto the very end link of the chain. And close my little loop back up. And then I can come in and start trimming those. Um, my, I wasn't very even with my wrap this time, guys. Look, I have one way extra long. That's fun. I like that. Yeah, you can, if you're gonna do a wrap loop, you can wrap it directly to the chain for sure, Pamela. Um, Tina, where to cut for a simple loop when you're, it really depends on what you're doing um, and how big you want your loop to be. Because for some designs, you might need a very big loop depending on what you're connecting your, um, your uh, whatever it is you're making. Depending on what you're connecting it to, you might need a big loop, you might need a very small loop. So I'm gonna do a quick simple loop demonstration. Um, uh, Tina's asking about that in the comments. So, so say for example, I've got this, I've got this bead and I'm gonna string it onto my head pin <clears throat> and I'm gonna bend that over right at the top. And I usually make sure I'm protecting the top of the bead because depending on what it is, it may crack. If you bent the wire directly onto it, you don't, you know, at the edge of the hole, it might crack. So I usually try to make sure I protect that. So, and people have different um, techniques for simple loops, uh, especially with a heavier gauge chain or wire. I usually trim, I kind of know from experience where I trim this wire is gonna, of course, it's gonna determine how big my loop is. So for a typical smallish loop, um, I'm gonna trim it at about three eighths inches. And obviously I'm, I'm eyeballing, but let's grab a ruler. So about three eighths of an inch, that's right about makes a very nice size loop. Depending on what I'm attaching this to, if I want a bigger loop, I, I just trim it a little further out, like a half an inch is gonna make a very big loop. Um, so it really depends on what you're doing. And if you're doing something like repeated, repeatedly and you're gonna make a lot of these to attach to a design and you want all the loops to be the same, um, of course, how big your loop is also depends um, on where you work on your plier, around those plier jaws. But some people make little Sharpie marks where if they wanna do a whole bunch of consistent loops, they'll make a little Sharpie line. And, um, and that way they can work in the same spot and cut their wire to the same length and they'll get consistent loops. Um, again, where you're working on the pliers is gonna depend, is gonna determine how big your loop is and how long your piece of wire is, is also gonna um, determine that. So um, I'm a, my, I cut it at about a half an inch and I'm working about a half an inch back on the jaw and that makes a very nice roomy loop. If I had wanted, if I had cut it at three eighths inch, then I would work a little closer in on the jaw and get a smaller loop. So it really depends um, how big you want your loops to be. And experience, right, is the best way to <laughs> learn all that stuff. Just keep doing it and you'll figure out all your own tricks. So the last step for this little second design with the suede lace is uh, just throwing your wire on it. And that, I like that. That's a fun palette. Very, um, still feels a little westerny, but that gold brightens it up. And uh, yeah, there we go, guys. So as always, this project is downloadable on our website. 
I'm going to throw a link. Right, it's up in the description. I'm also going to throw it right here in the maybe. Yeah, there we go. Throw it here into the comments. And if you want to see the Wild West collection on the website, um, I'm going to throw that link in there too. That brand new Wild West collection. And hope you guys like this this design. It really is a very easy one and could be very. Of course, you're going to need the crimp ends, but beyond that, you could work. You know, you could modify the design with whatever lace you happen to have. And this is totally <clears throat> the, the accent bead is totally whatever's in your stash that you want to use. You know, I'm going to switch my camera back. So, yay. First Wild West demo, and it's a good one, I think. We like it. So, um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you, as always, for joining me. And um, always makes a, a fun Tuesday morning when I, when I have a Facebook Live scheduled. So, um, we'll get something scheduled for next week and um, let you guys know what it is later on. And have a great week. Be well and, and make stuff. And uh, we'll see you later. Bye.